Hey, true believers, Chris Mack coming at you yet again with another great weekend figure review. Today we are going over the Marvel Legends Age of Apocalypse Sugar Man Build a Figure Wave Dark Beast. And I, you know, I was on the fence about getting this figure because I already have the Blue Beast, but this is a psychopath Henry McCoy, and of course I have to have the psychopath in my collection. And he just looks so great in his box. He comes with the Sugar Man hammer. And uh, one thing that I've always wondered with this uh, hammer is, is that supposed to be Milnor? Is, or is it just, you know, a different hammer? Because like, you know, an old man Logan, when they go to that town called Hammersfall, that's where uh, Logan's, not Logan's, uh, Thor's hammer fell, so they call it Hammerfall. So I never knew. If you guys know, let me know down in the comments. But as you can see, you get the window there. You get that same cool logo of the X-Men, which was used in the Astonishing and the Amazing X-Men line. Come around here to the bottom, you get that cool Age of Apocalypse logo. You get the Build-A-Figure Sugar Man Wave little thingy so you know what you're getting. Come around here to the side, and I'm not too big on the artwork here. Again, I wish they would have used something from the original comics, because that just... I don't know. I know that they always like to use, you know, refreshed ideas, but I just think that one's just a little, in my personal opinion. Though I still, as I've said with the other ones, I love this looming apocalypse face there. That is cool. Come around to the back, you get a really neat product shot of, of a dark beast looking psycho. You get a read up and the figures that you need, so I'll leave it to where you guys can pause and look at, <laughs> read, you know, do the read up and look at the figures at your leisure. Come back around this way and the same kind of disappointing artwork there. I'm just not real fun with that. If you hear that noise, I'm watching over the little one today. So he's wanted to get his two cents on the review. So make sure to say, hi, little one. Hi, little one. <laughs> Come back around here. We get the window. You know, same. Great. Looks good. Bottom. Legal. <clears throat> Don't care. But what we do care about is, is this Henry McCoy figure worth a flap? So let's go ahead and get the doctor out of his box and give him the prognosis on what we think of him. And here's Dark Beast out of the packaging. And I have to say, after kind of just working with him, posing him, I absolutely love this figure, guys. It is so awesome. Now, granted, as I said, this Henry McCoy is absolutely insane compared to the, you know, the lovable blue beast that we all know from the 616 universe but this earth 295 even though he's insane he does have this rather creepy charm about him which i think what's what makes the character interesting in the first place so as you can see just looking at him here on the on the spinner he just looks so gorgeous the way the metal here reflects in the light and just the nice overall gray painting which we'll get more into in a minute but just take a minute and let it all in and just see how cool this Age of Apocalypse set has become. So with all that gushing, let's go ahead and get Henry McCoy off the spinner here and get a closer look at his paint apps, his articulation, and some backstory. So one thing I forgot to mention is Dark Beast. He is available on Big Bad Toy Store as well as Megaopolis. I checked Dorkside Toys and they are sold out. I checked DMW All Thing Marvel, nada. So those are gonna be your two best bets online. Now with that said, the Dark Beast, Earth 295 of Henry McCoy, his first appearance, like most of the other mutants in this timeline, was X-Men Alpha. And um, because Professor X died at the hands of Legion, Henry McCoy grew up not you know, really getting to learn compassion or ethics from Professor Xavier or how to responsibly use science. So he fell into the hands of Nathaniel Essex, aka Mr. Sinister, where he, he this beast started learning eugenics and became part of the Factor X comic as, you know, the main guy. And you know, all the people that he uh, experiments on, he does these experiments in the breeding pens on mutants to try to make them bigger by using Essex's eugenic plan. And that's how he came up with Nate Gray, the X-Man. Now when it comes to, uh, what is it called, the ending of this series in X-Men Omega, he, along with Nate Gray and Sugar Man, are the only three <laughs> that make it to the 616 universe. And as the uh, Onslaught event slowly approached, this beast decided to usurp our Hank McCoy in X-Men Unlimited number 10 because this beast wanted to hide from this universe's Sinister because he did not want to be found out. So that's kind of the the whole rundown of Dark Beast from the Age of Apocalypse. However, there was 
a couple of more interesting appearances by him. Now, during M-Day and the uh, Endangered Species uh, event, he has to team up with Hank McCoy yet again to try to find a cure to restart the X gene in all the X-Men, which, oh, the way he, he this beast treats people, whew, it, it's intense. And then the other one was uh, Rick Remender's Uncanny X-Force. X-Force actually has to approach this beast to figure out how to get to the Earth-295 universe. So, yeah, those are some great reads, guys. Definitely make sure to check them out. But with that said, let's talk about this figure after we kind of had some backstory. And I absolutely love this figure. As I said, when I first saw him at Walmart, I was like, do I really need another beast? And the answer was, yes. Yes, you do. <laughs> because I just... this. Uh, character in the AOA just really gave me the creeps and as you can see let's look at the paint apps oh man let's just look at this face it looks so good again I wish they would have done this with Weapon X like they did with Wild Child where you just get the straight yellow eyes just adds you know that lack of emotion with no pupils whatsoever and you get those big snarling teeth and then I always thought it was kind of weird, but, you know, they had to do something different in the AOA, how they kind of gave him dreadlocks here, which I was like, um, do we call him uh, Marley McCoy? Yeah, man, we jamming. And then, again, just the hair. The hair is just all over the place and just looks very demon-esque the way it flips out. It looks like something you'd see on Wolverine. So gorgeous, gorgeous work, especially with the blue and the black wash, or as I call it, the uh, dry brushing on the fur, all that dark gray, and then just that little bit of blue added to it just really shows that, you know, there's a little bit of our Hank McCoy in there, even though it's not him. Love the fur on the arms there, just big and bulky and hairy. Same here, just all the way down the arms. You get these big monster hands that look good, and as you can see, the paint apps are just so clean. I'm so glad I got a clean figure. And then I, the one thing I never understood, maybe you guys can help me out, because Hank in this universe is... He, you know, he's always experimenting on himself like he is his captors, and that's how he got his furriness in this gener in this universe. But this here, I don't know if these are supposed to be metal pants, or if they're supposed to be leather and they look metal, or if he's part uh, cyborg at this part point. I have no idea. So if you guys know, let me know. But nonetheless, that blue with the black wash just looks gorgeous all the line work in there all the intricacies of it just looks great and you get down to big hairy legs such great work and just the way it reflects in the light and again just like our blue beast you get that great great big feet that just look awesome and we'll get in the articulation and talk about the toesies in a minute but man i could not be more thrilled with this dark beast i am a happy little camper the way he came out just gorgeous 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 but you know nonetheless he's a bad guy and the last comic i do want to reference is uh matthew rosenberg's uncanny x-men number 20 oh man the way iliana finally takes him out whoa that just gives you the shivers whoa this beast is so articulated, guys. It is insane. Mad you could even say. Ha ha ha. So the head, this is probably one of the things that kind of sucks, but, you know, with long hair characters, you can't help it. The head can go down that much, which is really awesome, and he kind of has that knocking on the peg there. So nonetheless, you can get him to look up about that much. You know, you tilt the head forward, you're not going to get that much. You push it back a little bit. But it's just because of that hair, just like with every other long-haired character that we have. And because of the hair, you know, you try to spin him this way, you can kind of get it, but he's still going to have that kind of tilt downness. Same thing on that side. So it's whatever. And it has great play on the peg, so you can see there just... Good stuff there. Arms, 360. Can go up that much. Yeah. And that much, so you got a great range there. Upper bicep, 360. Double jointed elbows, great spinning and play in the hands. You can go up that much, that much down, so you're good to go there on the arms. And then what I love too is he has the butterfly joint, so you can really get some good 
I kind of feel like butterfly joints to a degree should be status quo because it really helps as you can see here we just kind of put his hands together like Mr. Burns and just be like excellent <laughs> and then you know he has he doesn't really pivot all that much I mean he kind of can he's got to kind of be careful but what I like here is on the ab crunch is he has two different points so he has the ab and then he has the, uh, an ab and a chest so you know you twist him down about that much and then he can go even further same thing with the back really get a little range of motion and I love that you can't see the peg like you do with that storm figure oh I hate that now his legs because you know Beast is acrobatic I like that they did that now with the legs they added something new that I've never seen before and I didn't notice this until I watched a uh, Shardimus Prime's video so I'm glad that I did so I could share it with you guys so appreciate that man so you see the legs, how they're kind of up in here. You take it and be gentle with this. Don't moose it. I don't know if you can hear that, but watch the legs. Which really helps to get them out even more, especially when you kick forward and you kick back. Great stuff there. So I'm glad that that was something that was brought to my attention. That is so awesome. And then double jointed knees. Love it. And now again with this how you can kind of see that the the joints that the leg is on one thing you have to be careful of and I, I was kind of monkeying with it let me pop these back in just for safety is he does have an upper thigh cut here and it is stiff so make sure that you're not moosing it too much and that you maybe hold here that helps immensely so that you're not snapping anything or breaking anything now for the feet, what I was talking about a minute ago, this is cool. And these are, you know, like with the new McFarlane uh, Toys DC Multiverse stuff. Oh, and he doesn't, he doesn't have an upper, or if he does, <laughs> I haven't been able to spin it, but it looks like it does. So maybe, maybe not. Is I like that the feet, these parts here, because, you know, he, he's able to flip around like an animal. I like that the feet do this. So that's good stuff. So, you know, you can get that way, that way, that way that way so you can get some really good articulation on the feet and then of course really good solid double jointed or not double jointed uh, ankle pivots yeah that thing <laughs> as you can tell not enough coffee today but like I said guys just look at that super super articulated character that I just cannot gush enough about and as you can see just standing there and all his psychoness just looks great now here's Dark Beast next to the rest of the wave that we have already reviewed. So these are all the figures that you need to build the Sugar Man. Now what's kind of interesting is I put Morph and Weapon X here on the outskirts because you know they were mostly X-Men and you know Logan struck out on his own. But Wild Child, Sunfire, Gene, Nate, all of them tragically one way or another were altered, experimented on by this guy here. And, um, you know, he took Gene's DNA along with Cyclops, and that's how they got Nate. I can't remember what they did to Wild Child. And then it's not clearly expressed in the comics, but from what I read, Sunfire, when he, when we're shown in the pages of Astonishing X Men how Apocalypse killed him, well, killed him. Dark Beast experimented on him, and that's how Shiro became fully inflamed because he couldn't control his powers anymore, hence why he's constantly on fire. So it's kind of tragic when you look at him in a lineup like this, but in terms of, like, figure and just the lore and the comics, absolutely gorgeous, guys. I'm glad that I picked up this entire wave. It's not often that I do that. So just seeing all them finally together like this oh man i could not be more happy i hope that we do eventually get a, a, a hasbro version of Sabretooth and cyclops and i can't wait for that apocalypse i was looking at him and i'm like i'm really leaning toward yeah i'm probably going to get him just because it's the age of apocalypse my all-time favorite and as you can guys see here how he monsters towers over everybody even shiro how i've been talking about he's kind of the tallest not no more. <laughs> so yeah, great wave, guys. I love how beautiful they look when you put them up against one another here. Just 
great stuff. So if you've been on the fence about the Age of Apocalypse line, definitely, definitely something you want to pick up, especially like me if you're an Age of Apocalypse fan. This is such a great figure, guys. I love how crazy poseable he is. And yes, you know, you can see some remnants of the Blue Beast on here, but I feel like this Dark Beast nonetheless stands out on his own. Now again, with like I've said, with all of the Age of Apocalypse figures that we have gone over, my only gripe is the lack of accessories. Because in the comics, you know, he wore goggles, he had, you know, all sorts of lab equipment. It would just been nice to see something with him that represented that. So that's probably the only downfall I have to give this entire run that I've gone over. But nonetheless, just looking at the time they took to make this Dark Beast comic book accurate, I, I can't complain, guys, especially for how big he is and how articulated he is. Definitely five out of five X's for X-Men, or in fact, X in this point. <laughs> but yeah, if you guys have enjoyed this figure, please first and foremost, check with your local comic shop and see if they have one in stock or if they can order one for you. If not, then you can go to the places aforementioned in this review. So, and if you guys have enjoyed this review, we'd really appreciate if you take a moment to hit like, share, and subscribe. Helps the club channel more than you could possibly know. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that fancy little mutant bell next to subscribe, that way as we continue to upload content, you guys will get notified and come to the channel. Love to hear your feedback and have a dialogue with y'all down in the comments below or on our social media pages, which I'll make sure to leave the links down in the description below. So with all that said, I hope y'all continue to have an absolutely amazing day reading and happy hunting, true believers. And I hope y'all enjoy the slideshow coming up now.